Welcome all sports fans, YouTubers, Facebookers, all social media across the nation. Uneducated Network presents Uneducated Sports Talk. I'm your host, Carlos Clayton, and today we're going to talk a little baseball, and we're going to talk a little bit of basketball. But first, before we do all that, please, if you haven't, like and subscribe to Uneducated Network, where you see my show, Uneducated Sports Talk, and many, many, many other shows. I guarantee you guys, you will not be disappointed. We have more shows on the way coming as well, so be prepared for all those good things coming to Uneducated Network. I'm telling you guys, it is not just a YouTube channel. It is a way of life. I'll tell you that right now. So, with that being said, let's jump on into Major League Baseball playoff news going on. It's been flying by, to be honest with you. That's the one gripe I have with baseball is that the season is so long and the playoffs are so short. But uh, that's a good thing and a bad thing. We can talk, talk about that all day. But uh, that's my problem. It goes by so fast. But anyways, it comes down to four remaining teams. The Los Angeles Dodgers are against the Chi-Town Cubs, Chicago Cubs, the defending World uh, Series champions. And then we have the New York Yankees against the Houston Astros. And right now, Houston is down 3-2 to the New York Yankees. After, after having a 2 nothing lead, when the first two games are home, they lose the next three games on the road in New York to where New York has been just doing damage. Um, they win the first two games, two games to one. I mean, two, uh, two to one. For the first two games, the Astros, and then they go into New York, uh, get pounded, I believe, uh, eight nothing. Game three had a chance to win it in game four, uh, and uh, was up four nothing in the eighth inning. So Aaron Judge uh, has been playing fantastic uh, this postseason, especially at home. When the Yankees are at home, they're very dominant right now. But they're five and one at home, um, and then when they go on a roll, they're just a completely different team, as we know. But with that being said, the Yankees are taking care of business at home. They go back to Houston for game six to where I believe it's Justin Verlander uh, pitching for the Astros. I do not know the pitcher for the Yankees right now, but I can tell you this, it is in the Yankees' favor. The Yankees aren't even supposed to be here, to be honest. It's supposed to be a rebuilding year for these guys, but they keep battling and keep battling. And CeCe Sabathia has just shown a new way of life for the Yankees. He's pitched, I believe, three games so far in this playoffs, and he's looked absolutely dominating in these games right now. I would have never thought, I thought CeCe was done last year, to be honest with you guys. CeCe has come back, and he's looked good in this postseason. I'm, I'm happy for him. Now, the Yankees, look, this is a win regardless of what happened. Will they make it to the World Series? I don't know. I think the winner of Game 6, is, if Houston wins, Houston's going to win the series. If the Yankees win, obviously they win the Game Series. So I think Game 6 is going to be the clincher for whoever it is, in my opinion. Uh, I would love to see Houston win just because I'm so close to Houston. Uh, when it comes down to where I live at in Lake Charles, Louisiana, I'm only two hours away from Houston. Uh, matter of fact, two hours east of Houston. And uh, I do love the fact that these games mean so much. And the reason why it is small, so every game matters like crazy. Every pitch matters like crazy. And uh, this game right here, uh, Dallas Keiko struggled for, the, uh, for Houston. Gave up five runs, I believe, and five in this pitch. And Tanaka came in and threw seven scoreless innings. One thing about the Yankees is that once they get into that bullpen, it's pretty much lights out. They've been doing a great job so far. They were just as good as the Indians, but I thought the Indians had better starting pitcher. And that's a problem. When Houston cannot get out early on the Yankees, that bullpen is much better than Houston's bullpen. So, um, and we all took notice that in game four of the series. And Astros should have been a 3-1, but now it's 3-2 going back to Houston. Uh, and right now we have in the National League, the Dodgers versus the Cubs. Dodgers are three games to zero. That is very surprising to me. The Dodgers have surprised me this whole entire postseason. I thought that they would have, would have got smacked up by Arizona or it had been very close to a game five. No, they split the Diamondbacks, the high-powered offense Diamondbacks, and they come in to... Um, coming to basically Chicago and beat these guys three straight games, looking for the sweep tonight, so I'm very interested. Uh, we could have our first uh, World Series participant in the Dodgers. I don't see the Cubs making a comeback and sweeping, but hey, anything can happen, right? I mean, this is the defending world champions and just take it one game at a time, not the old cliche. I think that the Cubs, um, are, they, well, I think they know, that they, they, they've been struggling hard Especially their one through four hitters, or not four, uh, their four, five, and six hitters, their meat lineup, they've been struggling big time. Right now, they're like, uh, I think uh, Rizzo and Brian are 0 for 22 in the last 
RBI opportunities at the plate. So that is astounding to hear. It's crazy uh, to hear about that. So the Cubs are struggling on offense. The Dodgers are looking good on uh, defense as well, as well as offense hitting timely hits. So as of right now, out of all four teams, the Dodgers look to be the best team and poised for a World Series. Now, I've always said that I didn't trust uh, Clayton Kershaw, and they've been doing it without Clayton. That's the thing. They won despite Clayton's uh, inaccuracy or um, his dominance in the playoffs. He just hasn't dominated a game yet in these playoffs. He's only, I think it's only been two games, but he hasn't dominated either one, and they still won those games. Last year or, or the last three, four years prior to that, they were losing those games that Clayton struggled, which made the whole team kind of go like, well, we can't win with Clayton. Uh, having off games. And if Clayton's off, then we're just off. You know, this year is a little different. So the Dodgers are looking pretty good out of the four teams. They're probably looking like the best. So I would love personally to see the Dodgers face the Astros, but right now, Yankees are just one win away from going to the World Series, seeing the Dodgers versus Yankees. Old school kind of feel with that. Uh, but I would much rather see the Astros go in there, so I'm still rooting for those boys. But the Yankees look good. And the Strolls, albeit young, the Strolls are the better team. And now that Dallas Keuchel, who was the Yankees' killer, has been dethroned by these Yankees, Dallas Keuchel now that that might bring in some uh, wavering when it comes down to Astros. A good thing for them, the next two games are at home, so they're going to get that get that home cooking, and hopefully they can get some runs and some scores in because they're gonna need all the help they can get, man. So, uh, with that being said, I'm excited for the playoffs. The way it's going right now is pretty quick. It's gonna end pretty quick. I'm, I'm Two weeks and it's over with, to be honest. But thank God to our next topic. The NBA has arrived. Not only do we have football now, we're in the middle of football, but now we have the beginning of basketball season. And usually the beginning of basketball season is just kind of ho hum. But with this off season that's just happened and all these crazy turnarounds, it makes you want to tune in to at least the first week of NBA play because you want to see everyone's first game. You want to see how is Russell Westbrook. Uh, Carmelo Anthony and Paul George going to uh, react with each other. How is Chris Paul going to look with the Houston Rockets? Um, how is Kyrie Irving going to fit in with the Boston Celtics? How is that going to look like? You, you want to know all that. Jimmy Butler with the Timberwolves, how that, that line is going to look like. Um, you know, the Golden State Warriors, obviously. The Cleveland Cavaliers. So, so many things that's going on right now. Hell, the Philadelphia 76ers. We'll talk about them in just a minute. They played their first game against the uh, Washington Wizards. And, um... They look pretty freaking good. I just want to tell you that right now. So, got a lot of things uh, about this new season that's going to hype you up to watch at least the first week. And then I don't really get, personally me, I don't get into the NBA game until about the Christmas time. When, when Christmas comes along, then I'm really engaged into NBA uh, basketball. But as of right now, I'm loving the way it's starting. It's a, it's a fresh sense, and I'm ecstatic about what's going to happen in this NBA season. But we had our first games of the season. Uh, Boston uh, Celtics went into Cleveland to face the Cavaliers. Kyrie Irving is facing his old uh, teammate in LeBron James and gang. So I wonder how that was going to happen. And it started off with very, very, very bad news. Our hearts and our prayers, our thoughts and all of our uh, prayers go out to Gordon Hayward as we pray and we hope that he has a very speedy recovery. Uh, I believe six minutes into the game, he goes for an alley-oop. He comes down awkwardly, he breaks his ankle, and I believe his tibula as well. So he's going to be out for a long time. There could, there could be a chance, a slight chance, he makes it for the playoffs. Uh, but we're, we're talking, man, missing that, minute, man, that much time. You might as well just sit him out for the whole year, in my opinion. But uh, I feel bad for him because he, you, you're basically robbing, and this is a fresh new start with Boston, you're here with your old coach, um, and you break your ankle like that. The whole series, the whole season for Boston probably comes down in flames in just one incident that happens in a game. And let's stop with all that. Was it intentional? None of that was intentional at all. I don't even want to hear comments about that anymore. It wasn't intentional. No one's intentionally trying to break anyone's ankle. I, I can tell you that right now. But I feel bad for Gordon Hayward. We're praying from Uneducated Network and uh, everyone around us. We're going to pray for Gordon Hayward that he has a very speedy recovery because um, when an NBA player goes down like that and you see not only the Boston Celtics but the Cleveland Cavaliers uh, players and the fans, they're all seeing that and it's like you want to cry. You know, you want to you feel so bad because you knew he put a lot of hard work into this season, his first game as a Boston Celtic. 
uh, his first game with his head coach from college in Brad Stevens. And so you wanted Gordon Hayward to do good. And he looked pretty good the first you know, five minutes of that game. He had like, had, like four points. And, you know, you knew that he was going to get his shots in. But nonetheless, much, much, much respect to both sides for having been a class act when that happened. Twitter talk all, all around uh, Gordon Hayward. So, like I said, uh, myself and Uneducated Network, we're going to uh, pray and hope that you have a speedy recovery and come back very, very soon, Gordon Hayward. But nonetheless, there was still a game to be played. It was very, it was tight. And then you, you felt when that injury happened, Boston had a low period. And that is very understandable, in my opinion. When you see your brother or your teammate or a very good friend go down, you won't be the same. You got to kind of shake back at halftime. I mean, Cleveland was up by as many as 18. And you felt like the game was over with already just because of the body language of the Boston Celtics. Boy, I don't know what Brad Stevens or Kyrie Irving said in the locker room. Someone had a rah-rah speech, and it made Boston come out and play strong. Now, I give them credit for keeping their head up high and actually putting a decent performance in. To be honest, they should have won the game. Cleveland wins the game 102-99, to thanks to LeBron James' effort at the end. LeBron James is a man among boys, and he could score on that team anytime he wanted to. Jason Tatum, who started off very, very... Um, frustrating, but you knew he's a rookie. He had to kind of shake back himself. And you could tell that he had a, oh, welcome to the NBA kind of moments. And then finally he got his composure in the second half. Him and Jalen Brown, those two guys are very lengthy and can run. And Kyrie Irving had those guys running up and down. Marcus Smart did a good job. But, I mean, at the end of the day, LeBron James took over when he had to, uh, making big plays toward the end, whether it's for himself or for guys like Kevin Love. Uh, and they want to win in the game 102 to 99. Kyrie had a chance to hit the uh, game time three, but it fell short with the air ball. Uh, I think it was just because he didn't see the time. He thought he had a lot more time than what he did. Then he had to rush it, and it, it was air ball. Uh, before we get into Kyrie and, and LeBron's, uh, you know, their their antics after the game, I want to talk about the Cleveland Cavaliers as a whole. It's only one game, and I don't. I'm not the type of person to rush into this. Um, I have, I, I usually don't have concerns when I know eventually the team will get it together because of their actual pieces. This team, I have a great concern for this Cleveland Cavaliers team, especially if they're going to go with Dwayne Wade um, and Derrick Rose in crunch time. I have a very, uh, it's always nice to have LeBron James, he's the best player on the planet. It's always nice about that. But when you have Derrick Rose and Dwayne Wade in crunch time and they cannot spread that floor, it makes it a whole lot tougher for Cleveland to actually do some damage in the regular season. Now, the style of offense they're going to play, they're going to need that against the Warriors if they do face the Warriors in the NBA Finals. They're going to need that. They're going to need that absolutely. I love the, the way they play, but if you want a, a regular season run to where you look kind of dominant, you're going to have to spread that ball out because they keep playing. The, they will lose a lot of games uh, playing that kind of stagnant basketball that I don't like. Now, it's just one game. But, like I said, can you trust Derrick Rose and D-Wade to last a full 82-game season? I don't see that happening. So, uh, Cleveland's got a lot of work to do. But, nonetheless, with Gordon Hayward goes down, that kind of eliminates Boston away from top tier east to where now it looks like Cleveland's back on it by himself again. So, um, but there was also a game, too, to be played. But before we get into the Warriors and Rockets, let's talk about Kyrie and LeBron. When Kyrie missed that shot, the game was over with. Kyrie LeBron did their little kind of exchange going on. I don't know what that's all about, but I was surprised Kyrie even remembered the handshake being gone from, for so long, but he knew everyone's handshake, and uh, that's the beauty of sports. The media makes it this ugly thing, and deep down in reality, I think those guys still have a bond with each other. They didn't mind uh, doing that handshake, and they, they knew it's all about respect, and I think that if Gordon Hayward's injury never happened, they would have walked and did a separate thing. But when you realize in just a matter of minutes or seconds or a play, your season could be over with and let them know your career could be over with. They realize this bannering stuff is too dumb, too stupid. Let's go out there, hug it out, be cool, man, and just squash whatever beef that the media wanted us to have. Because let's just be honest, the media really, really wants this to happen, some kind of robbery, some kind of beef. And in today's NBA, it's just not going to happen. Uh, these guys are way too cool with each other to be up there Shaq and kobe it up. You know, so it's not about to happen. Just don't think that. So 
Uh, we had a game too. The Golden State Warriors had their ring ceremony, and that's always an emotional time. I never liked the fact that uh, you have a ring ceremony and they used to have to play a game. I never liked that. I would love for them to get their ring ceremony um, before the season starts uh, and make it outside, make it a parade kind of thing, a festivity maybe. But I never liked it inside the arena. And then right after that, you have to play a game because people get emotional and your mind is not on really a basketball game. It's on receiving your rings. Then it converts to a basketball game. I never really liked that. I was not a fan of that. But nonetheless, the game had to go on. Houston Rockets come into Golden State and actually defeat the Golden State Warriors 122 to 121 in a back and forth fourth quarter. At one point, Golden State had a, a good little lead somewhere in the 17, 18 area. Uh, and they let that go away. And um, a lot of new pieces on both sides. Chris Paul comes in. And I'm going to be honest, he does not fit this Rockets team at all. He goes two for nine, I believe, like uh, seven, eight points, something like that. Uh, eight assists or something like that. Um, Eleven assists. Um, if you want him to be, I don't know how he's going to fit in. Because it felt like he, he was out because he had a bad a knee, I believe, Chris Paul. So uh, he left uh, in the game and didn't come back. But James Harden, it felt like the Rockets of last year it was just James Harden. Crossover, 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 shot, shot, shot. Pretty much drive it, kick to the wide open guys. And Houston's going to play one way and one way only. I think they really want Chris Paul maybe for playoff time. But for the regular season time, I don't see him fitting in at all, uh, to be honest. He didn't. He looked like he just didn't belong on that team. But nonetheless, the Rockets have it when they are on. And they're showing it all preseason, too. And now the first game of the regular season, that they shoot threes on top of threes on top of threes. And they make them at a high rate. And when they're on, they are on. Well, the problem is when they're off, they are off. So uh, they live by the three and they die by the three. We saw that they died by the three last year against San Antonio. Um, we don't want to get back into that. That was just very embarrassing if you are a uh, Houston Rockets fan. Um, but with that being said, I don't know. I don't like the ring ceremony because it, it takes your mind off an of actual game. And yes, um, the Warriors went in there and they, they started off pretty decently. But Steph Curry only 20 points. You get um, Kevin Durant only 20 points, I believe. 22 points, something like that. Swaggy P, Nick Young, came in there and was looking like the man when he walked through. He went 6 for 7 from the three-point line. Uh, I think 22 points. Nick, Nick Young is going to fit that team just right uh, when they get into the Now, I promise you, I can tell you this. The Warriors might go on a seven-game winning streak because there's no more uh, ring ceremony. It's no more of that kind of that stuff happening. So, um it was a great first day of basketball. Both games went to the wire. Kevin Durant thought he made uh, the game-winning shot uh, to, to, you know, to win the game, obviously. Well, they went back and replayed it. The ball was still on his fingertips when he shot it at 0.0. .0 it was still uh, on his fingertips, so game over with. Houston comes in there and does what a lot of people didn't think they were doing, run, but win. But when Houston is on, they have the kind of team to play against the Warriors in the regular season. That kind of jibber-jabber stuff is not going to happen in playoffs. You can cut that off right now against the Warriors team. And once the Warriors get to gelling, they're going to win 67 games easily pretty much. Um, and then the Houston Rockets, even though they, they look good, I still have them 54, 55 wins, third, maybe fourth seed, the way these teams are racking up now, the way they're looking. So um, that's all I got to say. Please uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Gordon Hayward, do you feel that Cleveland now is the definite favorite in the East with Gordon Hayward being out pretty much for the season? Let me know your thoughts and your comments down below. Um, like, comment, subscribe to Uneducated Networks where you can see my show, Uneducated Sports Talk. You can see other shows like So You Think You Know Sports, hosted by uh, Craig Jones. You can see Uneducated Star Wars Talk, hosted by Christopher Lambert. Please check out our game in Uneducated uh, by Sheldon Woods. Check that out. He's, up, he's on his Madden right now. He's looking pretty good on that. So we got a lot of stuff going on, and we actually have new shows going out as well. Be on the lookout. We have Beauty uh, Beautifies by Aisha, which is my wife's makeup channel. She's going to do her thing on that. Uh, we also have my daughter's coming out with a show called uh, Young World. It's going to be her baking cakes and goodies and all that stuff. She got banner rolls, so I told her that we can do her show. So she's very excited about that. I'm excited about that. Uh, like I said, we also have um, more shows going to be coming out as well. So 
be on the lookout. This is an uneducated network and it has a lot more things going on. Like I said, this is more than just a YouTube channel. It's a way of life. So, Uneducated Never Presents, Uneducated Sports Talk. I'm your host, Carlos Clayton. And as always, sports fans, you guys know what it is. Stay smart, stay uneducated. Till next episode. Peace.